You might just go find some religious stuff out there because there's plenty of it. Turn to the book of Ecclesiastics. Oh, hallelujah. Would you like a Bible? Somebody throw him a Bible. Not from over there, though, okay? <laughs> Is that a full one? Okay. We don't want to give him a quarter one or half of one. Glory. Ecclesiastics chapter 3. Glory, hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a, a choice. A choice. Praise God. How many of y'all want to make the right choices? Amen. You get tired of making the wrong ones, don't you? Sheesh. In verse 1, let's speak it together. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. Is everybody there? To everything there is a what? There's a what? A season. A time for every what? Purpose under heaven. There is a season. That is, events of time will occur during the season. These are events. Every season is a certain amount of events that's going to occur. In your life. We go from season to season. Sometimes there's a season where you're going through a process of healing, restoration, deliverance. Amen. There's an area where God brings us through to a point where we, he wants to train us for something in one season to prepare us for another. But too many people quit. And they never fulfill what God was required for them to do in that season. Does everybody understand? Okay, so he says here there's a, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. So there's a purpose in the season. There's an eternal one, and then there's a temporary one. It says that a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, better repeat that one again. And a time to what? Keep silent. Yes. And a time to speak. A time to love. And a time to hate. A time of war. And a time of peace. Again, there is a season that has events of time that will occur in every season. Time is constant. I mean, there's a time, an area where we are living in a time. Amen? Amen. It is constant. Seasons come and go, but time stays. So there's got to be something for me and you to always be able to, everyone say, discerning your season is very vital. Because when you don't discern your season, you will fall out of time. Well, time, time, God's time. See, we must align everything up with, with God. Not what the world says. Not the world's agendas and events, but what God has. And there's an area where we must break through from all of these things. Sometimes there's a time in a specific, to be trained at a specific job. Amen? Sometimes there's a time of training for an advance, another job. But there's got to be an area where we've got to understand that when our season is up, it is time to move on. If you stay in that season, you will miss the next one. Amen? You know, we know that there's weather seasons, isn't it? You know, weather. These, these seasons and the weather 
They recycle every year with a designated time of a beginning and an end, and each one has a fulfillment. So there's a fulfillment of time in every season. When you think about it, when a woman is in conception, she conceives, there is a time. There's a nine months that she's going. So there's an area of preparation for her child to come. That is her season at that time. She, and she's going to change a lot of things. At least she'd hope. She's not going to drink no more and party no more. Amen. She's going to take care of herself and make sure that the baby's taken care of, the one that she's carrying. So there, again, in, in these areas of seasons and in these areas of times, we must adjust to them. Does everybody understand? We must adjust to them. Why? Because you must fulfill what is required in that season. It's a specific time. Because in a time, there's a beginning and there's an end. Amen. So a fulfillment of time. A woman in a conception will recall the time of the event that is going to come when she's going to deliver. And she must do everything that she can. She's going to alter her lifestyle of consumption, of diet associations, and protect herself and her child during that season to give birth to a healthy child. Why? Because that is the fulfillment, something that God is preparing. Amen? All seasons have a beginning and an end, but the events have a timeless impact. I'm going to say that again. All seasons have a, a beginning and an end, but the events can have a timeless impact. What you... What happens in one season, you can carry on to another season. Amen? And Matthew 16. Discerning your season. Matthew 16, verse 1. Discerning your season. Is everybody there? Matthew 16, verse 1. Let's speak it. Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came, and testing Jesus, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and he said to them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, but... For the sky is what? Red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites. You know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. In other words, he was rebuking them because they can discern everything physically, but they can't discern things spiritually. He said, a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah and he left them and departed now the prophet Jonah he was a prophet so prophetically it was a sign remember when <laughs> he was uh, in a in a whale for a few days amen and then spit him out well, those three days is a representation, it was a prophetic, something that was already predestined that Jesus would go into the depths of hell, take the keys to the Satan's kingdom, amen, of death, hell, and the grave. So we see that discerning your season, there's always a prophetic move. There's something that's being released that's coming and preparing. One of the theories of prophetic, when you are walking in a prophetic life, which every Christian should be, not a pathetic life, amen, a prophetic life, we should be drawing from the future. Everything is drawn from the future, not from the past or the present. We draw things from the future to bring it into the present. So everybody get, that's what we call living from the future. So God's promises are not just yesterday or today, but they're, where did they come from? The future, the word says that Jesus came here and left already. Amen? Every, everything that had to be accomplished, he already accomplished before the creation was even brought forth. We can't comprehend all that. 
So here was the discern the signs. The signs here is a representation of events. Everyone say events. It was a sign of a prophetic event that was happening, and they could not get it. There was Jesus who was prophesied about coming. The word would become flesh. They prophesied it in Isaiah that a child would be born, a government would be on his shoulders, and he would establish an everlasting kingdom. Everything was prophesied about him to come, and they missed it because they were only discerning the events of the physical and not the spiritual. Even though they were teaching it, they still didn't get it. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Spiritual seasons are different than natural seasons, even though sometimes they will align with each other. As this, a season is a designated or a time of fulfillment, and for me and you as a Christian, it's an eternal purpose. And it's also preparing for another eternal purpose. Again, everything season you're in, you're fulfilling from what you were learning. Everything you and I learn, we get tested on. Nobody gets away with it. Amen? So God is always preparing us for not only what is coming, but sharing with us what is at hand. Now, this is where we've got to be sensitive. That's why it's important to be filled with the Spirit of God. That's why it's important to be connected. Because we want to discern what season we're in. Now, this may sound a little strange to you, but sometimes the enemy tries to inner bring confusion and try and put an overwhelm. Overwhelming is trying to fulfill multiple seasons when only God is bringing you in one. There are multiple events in one season, but not multiple seasons. Is everybody okay on that? All right, cool. Remember, the season is for an eternal purpose for me and you. Everything in you and I that are doing, even though it may be in the physical arena, is for an eternal purpose. Everything that you and I do is to bring glory to the name of the Lord and expand His kingdom. Why? Because we want to rescue as many souls as possible. So you may be going through, when you come into the discipleship house, you're there for a nine-month season with a one-year accountability. And you want to fulfill it. Why? Because if you don't fulfill that part, you won't, you, the next season will have open doors. And it will be open doors of the enemy. Everything in you and I do, every time we make a vow and we don't fulfill it, it opens the door to the enemy. It brings a curse on us. That's why we must repent for unfulfilled vows. Amen? You know, one day I was, I remember the Lord tapped me on the shoulder one day, you know, he says, you need to repent for being late. I said, I need to repent for being late. He says, yes, you told them that you would meet someone at a certain time, and you were 10 minutes late. He said, you lied. So now I say, if the Lord wills. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I repented for it. Why? Because there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And we are accountable for everything that comes out of this tongue. In Joel chapter 2. You may be in a season of healing. Amen? In other words, and sometimes God will even put someone for you to take care of for your healing. But everything is about training for reigning. Amen? No matter what. We never stop learning. And, you know, in our process of transition in life, we are exchanging a temporary purpose for an eternal purpose. Always. So we're always trying to cut ourselves loose from the temporary so we can go eternal. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. Let's speak it. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will what? Pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall what? They shall what? Prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and young men shall see visions. 
and also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show what? Wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood and fire and pillars and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Now we know that that's happened many times already. And it shall come to pass that whatever, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. So we see here that Joel is talking about the connection in the Spirit. Amen? The people that were filled with the Spirit and connected were able to prophesy, prophetically speaking. How many of you know God will give you a dream or a vision? Amen? In the dream and vision, that's a prophetic word from God. It says that he reveals things even as we sleep because we're too busy during the day to listen. So we have prophecies, dreams, visions, signs, and these are all events of time to complete a season by drawing from the future. By drawing from where? The future. Everything that's been predestined for me and you and placed. Everyone say, I have a call. I have a purpose. And I have a destiny. My call is to battle. My purpose is is to what? To what? Destroy. Destroy what? Satan's kingdom. And my destiny is to infiltrate the world and rescue as many souls as possible. Amen? So in this prophecy, by drawing from the future, we are no longer earthbound. We are heavenly bound. Everything is heavenly bound. Every, that's why when you and I labor, we labor unto the Lord. You know why people complain and grumble because they don't get paid enough? Because they're laboring unto themselves. Well, I just don't make enough money. Well, whose fault is that? <laughs> Again, these are areas where God is trying to bring us and loose us from us. Our ways, our desires, our false hopes and false dreams. Everything is about eternal. We are living a life now, a brand new life, as a new creation in Christ, where old things have passed away and all things are becoming new. So that we are drawing. Our life is from the future in Him. Now, we know that He is past, present, and future, right? That's why we draw from His presence all the time. Because you're actually drawing from the future. So as you're drawing from his presence or drawing from the future, you are he's establishing in you your predestined place, your predestined purpose, your predestined call, your predestined destiny. But we've got to understand our season so we don't jump from out of our season or stop because it's not completed yet. Amen? That's a ploy to the enemy. In Philippians chapter 2, discerning your season. Philippians chapter 2. You know, you may ask, well, I don't know what season I'm in. Sounds like confusion. <laughs> look at you. You look at where you are right now. Amen. What is God doing in your life right now? What's happening? Well, he's training me. Well, then you're in a time of training. But there's a time of training for a specific purpose. Everything is, is everything that God's doing with you, setting you an eternal purpose. Okay. So he may even have you take, go to school and learn something. It may seem like a temporary purpose, but it's setting for a position to infiltrate. Everything, the end result is infiltration for a harvest. Everyone say infiltration for a harvest. Philippians 2.17. Let's speak it. Yes, and... Oh. Yes, yes, yes. And if I am being what? Poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice 
in service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know of your, know of your state. That's that state of being. In other words, knowing of what your season you're in. Does everybody get it? Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. You know, in this, we want to get to a place where we're constantly, let's go to chapter 3. In verse 1, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is what? Beware of what? Dogs. Those are demonized individuals. Beware of evil workers. Beware of mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence where? In the flesh. See, when you put confidence in the flesh, you begin to drift. You begin to delay. You begin to fall back. Because everything in God is God's time, isn't it? So we want to walk with him in his timing. And it, what happens is the enemy's always trying to get us to compromise. Because that's what begins to happen. In the, let me tell you, you get in the flesh, there's compromise. So what he'll try to do is put something in your season to contaminate it or distract it so it can't be fulfilled. Remember, the enemy does never want you to fulfill your season. If he can invade and distract and prevent you from, fulfill, from completing your season, you have not fulfilled a specific training or purpose for the next season. Does everybody get it? Praise God. He says, though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel and of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Boy, was he on the wrong mission. But he thought he was on the right mission. <laughs> he thought he was doing it. I mean, he was zealous for God, but he didn't know him. He was actually just zealous for the letter. He was pleasing the Pharisees and Sadducees. He was pleasing man. So it was after every Christian to arrest, kill, do whatever he had to do. The Pharisees of Pharisees and heresies also. Concerning zeal, per, per, persecuting the church of Jesus Christ. Concerning righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted what? Loss for Christ. For the learning and knowing and the knowledge of Christ. Yet, I in, yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ, that I may gain his anointing, his presence, to be found in him, not having my own, conch, my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may what? That I may what? Know him. Know him. Not about him, but know him. See, every season that you and I go too, and there's a completion, there's another reality of who he is and who you are. If it's not increasing, then there's something that was missed. Is everybody okay? That I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I do what? I press on. I press, in other words, I stay the course no matter what. That I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting the what? Those things which are behind me and reaching forward to those things which are Ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Powerful. 
So in this, there's an area where you and I must set our minds on the things from above. Amen? We're setting our mind. We're, we're focusing. We're refocusing. Not on earthly things. Remember, our seasons are, they're not temporary. I mean, they're temporary here, but they're still eternal. Everything has an eternal purpose. Sometimes you're in a season, not only of tra uh, training, but transition. You may be in a season of building business. But everything is an eternal purpose, no matter what you're doing. You may even be in a season where a part of it is vindication for you. Amen? Or there may be education, family, ministry, building, or whatever. But you're drawing your prophetic from the future. Anything that God has said that's a promise is from the future. So you are drawing from that. And whether he's given you a dream or a vision or whatever, you're setting it in the hands of the Lord for the future so he can build the house so you and I don't build it in vain. I've seen so many people go off course when a word was given to them prophetically or they had a dream or vision and they started to try to prove it or build on it instead of letting God build it. Does everybody understand? Because you'll build it in the flesh and the Lord isn't going to build it. Where your hand's at, his isn't. Hallelujah. Praise God. Dream, uh, discerning your season. One of the things that's important is we have the seven feasts of the Lord. Amen. In the seven feasts of the Lord, it is a, it's vital to discern because we know for me and you, so these things are from God. These are the feasts of the Lord. There's seven feasts of the Lord. The next feast is what? Feast of trumpets. It's the rapture. It's the removal of the church. So you and I are seeing all kinds of signs and events. We know that we are in a time of birth pangs, but those are coming to an end. We know the tribulation is going to start, but there are certain events that we know are going to happen before it starts. So in this, you and I are not only in the season, but we have to recognize what's going on because for God, the seasons for me and you to cooperate are his feasts. It doesn't mean we have to celebrate. We have to recognize because we celebrate everything. Amen? We have to recognize. You know, believers don't even recognize that the Feast of Trumpets is the next thing. They don't even consider that we have a president named Trump. Hello. How about talking about fulfilling the next feast with a Trump in office? I mean, that's pretty wild. So that means for you and me, we are focusing not only and in, in, in feeding off of the future, we know that time is short. And so in that, we've got to stop our planning. Amen? We have to allow the Lord to build, not us. Well, I have all these plans. We'll flush them. But you don't understand. He, I don't want to understand. If we're walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit, we're living from the future to the present, we know that God has all things and everything's going to work to the good, isn't it? If I'm letting go in the past, then it's not going to affect me here. The problem is too many people don't let go of the past and they're still in the seasons from 10 years ago. Amen? Amen? So the next feast is a rapture. We know there is a preparation for a harvest of souls. Does everybody get it? There's a preparation. God is preparing the whole world as a net for a harvest of souls. And too many people are not seeing it because they haven't fulfilled certain parts of their season and they're in another season now and they can't see what's going on. See, when you go from season to season, and there's got to be fulfillment in each season, it brings more sight, it brings more understanding, it brings more wisdom, it brings more discernment. You're able to wait when it's time to wait, and you're able to move when it's time to move. So we know that there's a preparation for a harvest of souls before the removal of the church, the body of Christ. We, as a body are in a season of search and rescue. We're in a season of search and rescue right now. 
This is a collective season of events. And of course, and again, then there's personal seasons. Amen? But this is a collective season of the body of Christ. And then we have our personal seasons of events that pertain to your call, your purpose, and your destiny. Second Peter chapter 2. You know, we've, we've been through many seasons in the area where uh, we were in the park doing services for goodness over two or three years. And then the, when it was time to move on, the Lord shut that down and we came here. But he told us that we were going to get thrown out of there. So, you know, we were, we were being prepared and, and other places. So everything is a season. We got to minister to all the people in the apartments there and feed them for two or three years, whatever it was. And. Recovered from all the football games. and <laughs> Second Peter chapter 2. <laughs> oh, glory. In verse 1, let's speak it. But there were also what? False prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves a swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be what? Blaspheme. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time their judgment has not, has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. Now, He's telling us false prophets and false teachers that have infiltrated. We call them prophets of Baal because they're servants of the Babylonian Empire. And they have infiltrated. They've infiltrated schools and become teachers and professors. They've been colleges and the media and music. They've infiltrated the movie industry, the political, judicial, military, and, and everything. They've infiltrated every corner of the globe in every area, and it's been going on for a long time. Now God is bringing judgment. Now he's exposing. So we are in the season right now, but judgment is constant in the body of Christ. It's not a season of it. It's constant. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. So one of the things that's happening is the purpose of these false prophets and teachers is to deceive individuals and prevent them from understanding the true ident uh, uh, agenda of destruction and corruption that they're trying to enslave individuals. One of the things that brings slavery to people, I want to call it, the, and you've heard this before, <laughs> emotional slavery. Emotional, people get enslaved by emotion. When emotional slavery is introduced, it affects their perception of events. They can't discern correctly, and they're not able to draw from the future. They can't draw from the future because fear is engulfing them. They can't see beyond themselves. They're, it's like somebody that's drowning in water. They're always... They're always about themselves. So they fall into a survival mode instead of a surrender mode. And they're not able to discern. In Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24. Discerning your season. In verse 30 something. Verse 36. 
Matthew 24. You know, if people would read their Bible, they'd be able to discern a lot more. You'd know the seasons. You'd know what's going on. You'd know your season. You'd be able to understand it. In verse 36, are we there? But Let's speak it. But of the day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, the days of Noah, was there wickedness running the earth? Yes. I mean, it, in other words, he was expressing not only the days of Noah, but the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, these are signs for you and I not to forget that it's happening right now. It's going on. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying. Now, why would God say marrying? Well, there's nothing wrong with being married to a man and a woman. But he's talking about something different. They were marrying to the same sex. They were marrying and giving in marriage until the day of Noah entered the ark. And did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So we see there's an event that we're watching. We're watching a whole time of events that's going on and all of these signs where it's the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. It is the days of Noah. Amen? To where we're seeing this happen. We can't just ignore it and just try to go on with a, our busy life. And this is where, why? Because you'll fall out of season. You'll fall out of God's time. Listen, you're not here today by coincidence. The purpose of fellowshipping and connecting all the time and, and reassembling all the time is to stay connected so we can stay in line, so we don't miss what God's trying to do, so we know what season we're in. And we've got to be able to yield to that season of what God's doing so it's completed. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Praise God. Um. In, in verse 20, or verse 40, I'm sorry. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and another in the left. Two women will be grinding at a mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, Now, whose house is he talking about? And don't tell me you're your neighbor's house. You're you. Therefore, you also be what? Be ready. Be what? Ready for the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. Who then is a what? Faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in what? Food in due season. Food in due season, that means there's something, God is going to release something from the future for you to be fed on, to support you in your season. Does everybody get it? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Surely I say to you that he will make him what? Ruler over all of his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with the who? Drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. And there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Oh, hallelujah. So we must maintain the course of heaven bound and not earthly bound by drawing from the future and the prophetic dreams and visions, and the prophetic word. How many of y'all know this is prophetic? Again, if people would look at this and understand that this Bible is recorded by the words of God Almighty, through people, through servants. When I had my visitation from the Lord, the first thing the Lord said to me is, my Bible is true. Because I never believed it. Of course, I was told as a kid that the Bible is nothing but a story. I didn't want stories. I wanted truth. Amen? In Matthew 12, or Romans 12, I'm sorry. 
Romans chapter 12. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Let's speak it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable God to God, which is your responsibility. Everyone say responsibility. Amen. And do not be what? Don't be what? Conform to this world, but be what? transformed by the renewing of your thoughts or the refreshing of your thoughts that line up with the Word of God that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we are transforming. We're not always transforming. We're in a transitional transforming all the time from season to season. Again, what are we transforming in the image of? Christ Jesus. Amen in every area. So there's got to be a constant refreshing of the mind of Christ to maintain a season to be fulfilled. We must constantly refresh it. Always being refreshed. Well, I could never ever, ever read or whatever, ever, ever ready battery, whatever it is. <laughs> With the <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 4. We got that rabbit. <laughs> never stops. <laughs> oh, that's the Energizer. Sorry. Yeah. Well, we're plugged in from the future, so it doesn't run out. Make sure you stay plugged in. 2 Timothy 4. <laughs> Discerning your season. Glory. Is everybody there? And starting at verse 1, let's speak it. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will endure, they will what? They will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires. How many of all know the desires and emotion? Yeah. Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Now, will they fall off course? Will they fulfill their season? No. But you be watchful in all things in Endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your what? Ministry or your mission. Everyone's on a mission. We've been sent by God into this world to fulfill a mission. Amen? So he says, be ready in season or out. In other words, the out of season is physical. The in season is spiritual. Go to Luke 11. Luke 11. Oh, happy days. Luke 11, verse 30, 33. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lampstand. That those who come in may see the light. The lamp of the body is the what? Is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body is also full of darkness. Now it says also. So what he's saying is that there's parts of light and part of, parts of darkness. Certain members are controlled by darkness. Certain members are controlled by the light. 
Therefore, take heed that the light which is in you is what? Now, darkness. Now, what does the Bible say? The angel comes as a, the devil comes as a angel of light, but he's actually darkness. Amen. How many know that false doctrines can be, come as the light, but it's actually darkness. Amen. You know, when you think about these religions and so let me share with you, Islam is not a religion. It's Satan's military. It's not a religion. Many of these things, these so-called religious organizations are really not religions. Their purpose is to fulfill an agenda. And that agenda, it's a military operation. And it isn't by light. It's by darkness. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody all right? Praise God. Let's grow a little further. Uh, verse... 36, if then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light, as when the bright shining of a lamp gives you what? Gives you what? Light. And as he spoke, a certain Pharisee asked him to dine with him. So he went in and sat down and to eat. And when the Pharisee saw that he marveled that he had no, not first washed his, washed, washed his hands before dinner, then the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees make the outside of the cup and dish clean, but your inward part is full of greed and wickedness. Foolish ones, did not he who made the outside make the inside also? But rather give alms of such things are you as you have, then indeed all things are clean to you. But woe to you Pharisees, for you tithe mint and herb and all manner of herbs and passed by justice and the love of God. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. I want to go to verse 46. 46. Is everybody there? And he said, woe to you also, what, who else? Lawyers. I mean, almost, almost every person in Congress and so forth has been a lawyer of some sort. Woe to you, lawyers, for you load men with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. In fact, you bear witness that you approve the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and you build their tombs. Therefore, the wisdom of God also said, I will send them prophets, and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute. That the blood of all prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the temple, yes, I say to you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge, you did not enter in yourselves, and those who were entering in, you what? You hindered into what? Season. Season. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Go to Luke 13. Luke 13. You know, we also have seasons of sowing and reaping, don't we? Amen. But some things are constant. We're always constantly sowing. If you're an individual, it's a giver, you will always fall into another season of more giving because you're receiving more. Luke 13, 22. And he went through the cities and villages Oh, yeah, that's it. Teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. The one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? And he said to him, strife. Strive for what? That means fight. Fight, battle. To enter through the narrow gate. Why? Because you're going to be distracted. The enemy will try to get you through the wide gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house had risen up and shut the door, 
And you begin to stand outside and knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. And he will answer and say to you, I don't know. I don't know you. Where, where are you from? And then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you. Where are you from? Depart from me, all of you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom and God and yourselves thrust out. They will come from the east and from the west and from the north and the south and sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed, there are last, <laughs> and indeed there are last who will be first, and there will there are first who will be what last. So there's a fight for me and you to constantly maintain course, so that we can maintain our discerning of season and the time of things that are going on in our season. See, one of the things that we want to do is throw out the things that don't pertain to our season. Again, this is where the enemy begins to bring confusion. So many times people want to go back to try and fix their season, and you can't. You must get in line and allow the Lord to fix what needs to be fixed. You can't. You go back, you'll miss what God's doing right now. Quit trying to fix everything. Amen? Amen. Maintain the course, let God build the house. 1 Peter 4. First Peter 4, verse 12. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning a fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or thief or an evildoer or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good to a what? Faithful creator. Judgment is constant in the house of God, as I said. What's it for? To release judgment to a nation in a season. United States was in judgment. God judged the United States the moment Obama was elected. There was judgment released. The purpose of his judgment for eight years, hello? What's eight mean? New beginnings. Amen. God was judging. Why? He put a veil. God put a veil on this country for eight years. So what happened? Darkness interceded, put judges in, put more professors in, put more congressmen in. Darkness put more and more and more in, changed rules, laws, regulations, began to choke businesses dismantle our military, dismantle our businesses, dismantle our import and export, dismantle the church, promote false religions and doctrines of demons. All of this here, Obama's election was a sign of judgment to the United States. Its purpose was to wake mankind, United States citizens, to an evil agenda. They were to awake. He was trying to awake. He veiled them so that when it was over with, they would go through this for eight years to see how much they had no, how much evil had taken over. And so it could all be exposed so that they, they would awaken to what has been going on and begin to stand up and fight. See, shifts and changes are established by what the body of Christ does by the Spirit of God's direction. That's why prophetically, when prophets are speaking, there's a changing of shifts. 
they're calling those things. Why? Because they're bringing things from the future into the present. So we get fed. We draw from the future. Amen? I don't know if you saw the post I put up. It was a prophecy of Clement on Facebook. But in this prophecy of Kim Clement, in the prophecy, which was in 2014 in February, he kept saying, impeach, 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 they will say. Impeach. But it won't happen. Because God put his Trump in office. And he will be reelected for another four years. And things will turn around. Remember, God is exposing wickedness and evilness to reestablish an atmosphere for him. Is everybody okay? So again, we're discerning our seasons and time of purpose for the preparation for what's coming. But we must be able to discern everything that's going around us, amen, so we can discern the area, okay, Lord, what's my next? Because, see, we fall into routines, and then when we allow the routine to dictate what's going on instead of the Spirit to say, look it. No, it can't be you, Lord. It can't be you, Lord. When he's saying, will you get out of there? <laughs> Quit this, stop this, do this, or whatever, or start this. In Galatians 6. But remember, God never interrupts himself. Amen? His requirements is to always complete what you're supposed to in that season. Galatians 6. Noah had a season of building an ark. I know how he feels, I think. <laughs> Praise God. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8. Let's speak it. Actually, let's start at 7. Do not be what? Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he's going to what? Reap. He who sows to the flesh will reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will the spirit reap everlasting, everlasting life. And let us not what? Let us not what? Grow weary. Don't wimp out. Don't give up. Everything, nothing is gained without a fight. Amen. And let us not grow weary while doing good, while doing the right thing. For in due season, in due season, there will be a release to you. We will also reap if we do not what? Lose heart. Know that it's coming. Why? Because if you're doing the right thing, something's going to come. Always. The thing is, you don't want to get distracted to move out of position. You don't want to quit what God has already asked you to do. Amen. Fulfill and complete what you're supposed to do in that season. And your next season will grow and prosper. Amen. Praise God. Father, we give you all the glory and honor and praise. We thank you for your mercies and grace. And we ask, Lord, that you protect what's been imparted into us today. So that it may grow and bear fruit for your glory. So that we may discern the season that you have placed us in and preparation for the next, in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.